Hey everyone, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Art. In this episode of C++ Crash Course, we're going to be talking about uh, false sharing and why it's so important to understand our underlying architecture when we're doing uh, performance optimizations of our code. So let's go ahead and take a look at a simple example. What we're going to be using is two new things, which is this uh, thread and atomic from the standard library. So when we're talking about thread, we're talking about you know having concurrent threads of execution. So what we want to do here is say launch a, a simple function like work uh, four times, but we want them to all run concurrently. All right, so to do that, we'll use thread. Now, one of the things that we want to make sure about is that we don't go into any kind of uh, uh, undefined behavior in terms of uh, sharing between th threads, right? So we might have uh, you know data structures or individual variables that are going to be shared between different threads, and we want some well-defined behavior when multiple threads are accessing the same data structures. So to use that, we'll use atomic, right? So to get kind of an idea of why we need something like atomic and say an atomic int in this case, let's look at a simple example. So, you know, in this case, let's say we've got some variable A, right? And let's say that A is equal to zero. Now, a case that we don't want to happen is, you know, core zero reads A, core one uh, reads A. So now it exists in the L1 cache. For both of these cores and let's say that both of these cores want to modify a so you know core 0 wants to do a plus plus and then core 1 wants to do a plus plus now the problem here if we don't use something like atomics or some kind of synchronization is that core 0 could add to a core 1 could add to a right but then both of these will end up adding to a and making it one right now what the programmer intended you know for this is to have each of these cores both increment A and have a final result of say something like two. But because we didn't take care into how these data structures, or in this case, a single variable was being accessed, we led into this kind of, uh, you know, we ended up in this kind of undefined behavior state. So what could happen is both of these uh, cores could try to increment A and, you know, we end up just getting one, or we could get the case where, uh, you know, maybe one increments and then the other increments, right? And we get two, but we're not guaranteed anything. But if we use something like an atomic, right? So an atomic int, it gives us, uh, it ensures that there's going to be one global to total order for updates to say, in this case, this uh, variable A. So what does that mean? It means that when A wants to do A++, it will first make sure that it has an exclusive copy. So it will say, I need this variable A, core one, you can't use it right now. Likewise, when uh, core one wants to all of a sudden use A, it makes sure that the copy that core zero has gets invalidated, right? And now it has the only copy, right? So that's kind of the basics of, you know, very rough idea of what atomics are used for uh, in this circumstance, right? So this is in terms of uh, explicitly sharing things. So let's go ahead and look at our baseline. Our baseline is this uh, function called single thread. And all we're going to do is call this work function uh, four times. Now we don't need to worry about sharing in this case. There's not going to be any uh, movement of this cache line, right? And it's because there's only ever one thread accessing it. So let's go ahead and uh, compile this. So one thing we have to do because uh, on my system, thread is implemented using pthreads. I have to, I have to link against pthread when compiling, but this will change system to system. Right, so uh, now when we go ahead and run this, nothing interesting happened, but what we care about is performance. So we can use something like perfset to get some general information. And what we see is that you know, if we run this a couple times, we can get a better idea and of kind of where we're sitting performance-wise. So you know, here we'll mainly focus on something like IPC. So the IPC we get, or the number of instructions per cycle, is about 1.05. Okay, so we're going to see that as kind of our target uh, in our execution. Now, let's go ahead and uh, go to the next function, right? So what if we want to launch different threads, right? So let's look at a performance of that. Now, here we're not talking about false sharing yet. This is going to be direct sharing or just sharing. Uh, so here, we're going to create one atomic int, and we're going to pass it uh, to four different threads. So we do thread t1 all the way through t4. And then we're going to use this lambda in order to launch a uh, work right for each of these threads. So that this just means that 
thread one will execute work calling it with uh, a reference to uh, a likewise thread two will call work with a reference to a so they're all referencing the same int uh, or atomic int that is and we call join to just say we have to wait for these threads to complete so you know in this case what's going on so let's go ahead and look at the performance of this right so we'll go ahead and recompile right and then we'll call perfstat again and we see something rather significant here we see that our ipc has dropped by about a third right and if we go ahead and run this multiple times we see that we're fairly stable around this uh, point 0.33, 0 0.30, 0 0.37 kind of uh, level. So it's about a third of our original IPC, so our instructions per cycle. So what's going on here? What happened that made our performance so bad? So let's go ahead and take a look back at our nice picture on the right. So what ended up happening was exactly the scenario that we looked at. Um, since every single one of these threads is going to be accessing the same variable, A, which is this atomic, Every time it wants to modify it, it has to get exclusive access, right? So all of a sudden, you know, A is in the L1, it's in the, maybe the L1 of a different core. Then, you know, core zero wants to do A++. That means it has to invalidate uh, the copy of this variable that's in, you know, the other cache, right? And it has to wait for that to finish before it can actually do its update and write back its update. But then, you know, core one is also running the exact same function. So it's trying to get access to this variable. So all of a sudden it is trying to access A, it has to invalidate the copy that's in the other core, and what we see is this kind of ping-ponging effect where this variable is having to bounce between all the different cores that we have in our processor, and we have a ton of invalidations going on. So we're spending most of our time in this program waiting for invalidations to get exclusive access to a variable, and then updating the variable finally just doing an increment. Right, so that's what, uh, that's a problem with direct sharing. Right, so how do we fix this? Well, the intuitive way is just to say, well, all I'm really doing is you know, incrementing this variable, right? And there's really no dependency between you know, incrementing. So why don't I just split it up into different variables, right? And update those different variables, which is a pretty smart idea most of the time. So in the next, next example, right, for different var, what we'll end up doing is we'll create four atomics this time. So if one, if one atomic is going to make it so, you know, we're bouncing around from core to core, well, if we have four atomics, this should fix this because now, you know, you know, every single thread will be updating only one of these atomics instead of updating four atomics, or, or rather instead of updating uh, the same atomic. So exclusive atomic per uh, thread. All right, so A, B, and C, and D get mapped to threads T1, T2, T3, T4, same join at the very end. So let's go ahead and run this example, All right? So we'll go ahead and comment out same var, and then run different var. Same compilation as well. So let's run perf step and see what happens. Turns out nothing happened. Turns out we stayed at the exact same performance, right? And we run this a couple more times. We see that we, we did stay at the same performance. So now it's still, 0.3 instructions per cycle. So still pretty bad, so pretty pitiful. Okay, why? Why when we use different variables and we're not sharing, directly sharing the same variables, did we get the same performance as if we were? Now, you know, earlier on I said that, you know, we invalidate uh, a particular variable, say, in someone else's cache. Well, it turns out when we're doing these invalidations, it's not as fine grain as say a single integer. So it'd be nice maybe in some circumstances to say, okay, invalidate only this particular, you know, short range of addresses. So like this particular four byte range for this integer inside of your cache. That's not really how it's implemented. So that's why we've got this cache line right here. So it turns out if you look at the address of A, B, C, and D, which are four atomics, they're in consecutive spots in memory. So, you know, F0, F4, F8, and Fc, right? So ints take up four bytes. So every four byte, uh, we get a new atomic, right? So what's wrong with this? Well, that means that they're all actually sitting on the same cache line, right? So we've got A, B, C, and D all on the exact same cache line. So when, you know, we want to access A in core zero and B, in core one, we have to get the same cache line, which means that either A 
will be invalid or either B will be invalidated to give exclusive access just to A for core 0 or A is going to be invalidated so B can uh, so core 1 can have exclusive access to B and this is all because they're on the same cache line so this is what we call false sharing so we didn't mean to have core 0 share B C and D but it just so happened the way that memory was laid out that that happened kind of by mistake or by accident. Hence why it's called false sharing, right? So uh, there is no actual dependency. There's no need for B, C, and D to be in the same cache on core zero, but it turns out it just happened to be that way, right? And so this is why we get the exact same performance as our direct sharing example. So it doesn't matter if we're moving a cache line with just a single variable, say just A, or if we're moving a cache line with four variables, right? So B, C, and D we're still moving the same cache line between all the different cores, all right? So uh, this is why it's really so important to understand the underlying architecture into what's going on. Uh, it's also important to understand that cache lines will be maybe 32 bytes, 64 bytes, 128 bytes. So this is another thing that's hardware dependent. Okay, so that's bad. How do we fix this, all right? So all hopes not lost. So let's go ahead and look at our last implementation, which is this uh, different line. And what we mean by here is different cache line. So it turns out we can be a little bit clever here, right? So we can make a struct. We can say a line is 64, which basically says, I want you to align this uh, struct uh, to 64 bytes. So now we're basically ensuring that every single one of these variables, uh, every single one of these atomic ints, so this struct only contains a single field. It's just the same atomic int that we were passing in just normally. But now we're putting in a struct and saying it, you know, align as 64. This will make sure that every, that each cache line, right, that this uh, this is going to be on, uh, there's only ever going to be one of these atomic ints on that cache line. So now, you know, A is going to be on one cache line, B is going to be on one cache line, C is going to be on one cache line, and D is going to be on one cache line. This will get rid of this false sharing, and we'll call everything uh, in a similar way. We'll just use this align type, which is just the name of the struct, and we'll just pass that to each of the threads. All right, so let's go ahead and save this. We'll go ahead and uh, recompile, right? And let's run it with perfstat. And what do we see? Well, even in, you know, not even the best case, we're still doing twice uh, as well as the, uh, as the direct sharing or the uh, false sharing version. We can run this a couple times and you'll see that, you know, we'll swing around a little bit between, you know, 0 0.6, you know, up to 0 0.8, even up to say 0 0.9 IPC. You also have to keep in mind that because uh, you know because we're launching this with threads, we're having to incur a little bit of an extra cost of thread creation and then uh, you know joining the threads at the very end of execution. So there's some extra overhead there, but we can see that even in you know some of the worst case scenarios, we're still doing uh, twice as well as the direct sharing and uh, false sharing version. And this is just because now you know. A is going to be on one cache line, B is going to be on one cache line, right? So this line can be sent to the L1 cache of core zero, B can be sent to the L1 cache of core one, right? And now core zero can just spin and work on A and nobody's going to invalidate A. Likewise, core one can just sit and spin on, uh, on B and increment and increment B without having to worry about any invalidations, right? So that's why it's really un important to understand your underlying architecture. So what we thought we were doing the right thing by giving different atomic variables, it ended up they were on the same cache line. And if we even print out our new aligned 64 by aligned struct and the addresses of these, we see that now it's not, now it's uh, this second position right in this address. So now instead of being you know 0004080c, now it's 4080C000, right? So now it's you know, every 64 bytes, we get a new atomic, not every, uh, uh, not every four bytes, right? So we basically fix this problem by making sure that they were on uh, different uh, cache lines. But that's gonna go ahead and do it for this episode. As always, feel free to check out any of my uh, stuff at github.com slash coffee before arch. Right, so this is under C++ Crash Course Optimizations and then under False Sharing. So you can download this, uh, uh, this example, play around with it, make sure that you understand it. As always, feel free to suggest any other topics that you would like. 
If you're really interested in this kind of uh, discussion, there's a great talk from C++ Con that uh, I took the pseudocode from in order to implement this example. Right, so this is on, you know, want fast C++, know your hardware, and it's a really great at motivi motivating the need of why you need to uh, understand your hardware if you want to write uh, high performance C++. So I'll link that below as well. But as always, I'm Nick, and hope you have a nice day.